Alrighty, we're going to answer the question how to make a great lentil soup. Now, we see lentil soups out there in the world as we're growing up and in time, from time to time that are thick, where the lentils are pureed and you barely see lentils, and then we see some that are chowdery. We're going to make you one that's kind of in the middle somewhere, you know, which I think you're really going to like. And we're going to start you out with cooking in bacon and bacon fat. Okay, and I have the pre-rendered bacon. And we got about a half a cup of fat there. And a little bit of bacon. Perfect. And we're going to put the mirepoix. Now remember, this soup is not pureed. So how the food is cut initially is how the food is going to appear in the soup bowl. Sometimes when you start out making a soup and you know you're going to puree it, it doesn't make any difference that much how you cut it up as long as you can get it pureed properly. So, but in this case, that's not the case. So we'll put our mirepoix in here. We will put our mushrooms in here. And in the case of this, because of the amount of food that we have to saute, we're going to supplement it with a little bit of butter. To make sure we have enough fat in the soup to cook the veg in. And we're going to add a little bit of salt. And we're going to add a little bit of pepper. And we're going to add a little bit of dried leaf thyme. And we're going to cook this for about five minutes. And we're going to time elapse that five minutes. So I'll be back in five minutes right away to um, finish the process of starting the soup, which would be included with sauteing the veg with the bacon, then adding the lentils, the tomatoes, the garlic, and the stock, and setting it aside to cook until the lentils are tender enough to eat. And that's the process, basically. So right now, we're going to come back in five minutes after this is sauteed and complete that process. OK, the five to seven minutes has elapsed. And the vegetables for the lentil soup, which is bacon fat with a little bit of butter to supplement the amount of fat that the bacon gave us from the rendering process, cooking the celery, carrots, onions, and mushrooms. Now we're going to add, we have some thyme in there also. We're going to add a little bit of garlic in accordance with the ingredient list. And we're going to add some tomato concasse to this item. And we are going to add the lentils, which I bought in a little bag in the supermarket this morning before we started for this shoot today. And I washed them off in some cold water briefly and drained them, and there they are. This was a one-pound bag. We put the lentils in there, and they do not have to be soaked, the lentils. And we're going to cover this with chicken stock. Now you can add ham to this or other pieces of meat or smoked hocks, um, all kinds of pieces of meat that's particularly smoked. Chicken stock in there. And now we're going to finish this with some peas and a little bit of butter. We're going to puree part of it and put it back in a little bit later. But for right now, we're going to time elapse this particular lesson while this simmers for about a half an hour. And I'll give you the exact time when I come back with the finishing process for the lentil soup. Basically, you just put it in your pot the way I've got it now, and let it cook so the lentils are tender enough to eat. And you take it off, finish it, and serve it. Again, lentil soup, like so many of the bean soups, has a tendency to taste a little better the longer you keep it around. So the second day, sometimes it tastes a little better. The flavors in there mellow a little bit. Although I will say, immediately upon completion of this soup, it tastes great. Uh, so don't misunderstand what I'm saying. So we'll be back in about a half an hour, which will be right now, right after, and uh, we'll finish it off then. All right, we're back with the lentil soup, the completion process, and it has been simmered. 25 minutes is all it took for these lentils to become tender enough to eat. And as you can see, I added a little bit of water to it once because it was thickening up, but I didn't want to add any more because I'm going to add a little bit of brown stock to this now to thin it out, and I wanted to make sure you saw that. And we're going to do that right now. There's some brown beef stock is what this is. And we're going to adjust the seasoning on this. The soup is, you know, the soup is done. Now, again, 
like many of the other beans, if you wanted to serve lentils, you could serve these as a starch, just like that, using this formula with a little bit less of the stock, okay? And there you've got a plate of beans, too, which is nice. You might want to butter and parsley them or something like that, too, but uh, it's important to understand that these bean soup formulas, the lentil here right now, uh, allows you, allows for that. Now, <clears throat> we're going to give the soup a taste, and then we're going to give you a finished version in the bowl that's chowdery, okay? And then I'm going to do a version that's partly pureed and added back to the soup, which is kind of a standard way in which you can deal with your bean soups. That part about changing the final texture, that is, whereby you puree a little bit of the soup and then reincorporate it back into the whole mass that has not been pureed. It, has a little, it gives it a little body then. So let's give this a taste first. The soup is good. This soup needs salt. This soup needs a little bit of pepper. That's all these soups are going to need. The only thing you can add to these soups that, at the end that sometimes might enhance the finishing, is you can put a few drops of liquid smoke. You can add some diced ham. You can add some more bacon. You can add more tomato concasse and things like that. But basically, the soup's done after the startup period and the cooking period in terms of the bean chowders. You know, the primary part of the work is finished. Let's give it another taste. Soup needs a little bit more salt. I'm going to put a pinch of sugar in here, too. Not to make it sweet, just to just mellow it just a little bit. That was salt and sugar I put in there just now, not just sugar. Let's give that a taste. The soup's good enough. And the other thing to keep in mind about the soup, as it sits in the fridge, if you make this the day before, it's going to tighten up. You're going to have to thin it out with water. So it'll become a little bit more concentrated in flavor later, if, um, just because it all tightens up and becomes less. There's less liquid. So let's try one in a bowl, the way it is, with a little bit of garnish. And I'd say... Just a few peas, a little bit of parsley. The soup's good to go, just like it is like that, okay? Now we're going to show you a version where you puree a little bit of it and then reincorporate it back in the soup, give it a little more body so it's not quite as chowdery, more of a bean puree version of it, okay? We use our little electric zapper. Now remember, I'm not trying to make the soup thick by giving it a little body. I'm just changing the texture a little bit, see? Nice, nice looking soup. Looks like winter. Some peas. Put a little bit of scallion on there if you want. You can add a little bit more of the little little dribbles of tomato concasse on there if you want to maybe give yourself a little bit more color. Throw a little bit of parsley in there. It's hard to overgreen this. That's nice. That's good. Ah. There we go. So there you have it. This is a simple yet delicious lentil soup. This is probably a very inexpensive soup for one to make either. Lentils are cheap. It doesn't take that long to make them. In terms of the cooking time, like the navy bean, for example, takes an hour, an hour and a half to cook the beans until they're tender enough to eat. Lentils, half an hour. There's no soaking involved in the lentils. You don't have to pre-soak the beans. And uh, it's a fairly quick, quick soup to make and very delicious. So you enjoy it, and this is just one more part of the soup series that I hope you get a chance to try and enjoy.